Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for EVTN News. Uh, today I have some interesting news for you, but I do want to start out with some comments, some viewer comments, and these are actually helpful comments for me. Um, you know, I've made some statements and the viewers have, it's not really a correction, but sort of an update. And so JR commented, he said, I know of a church in the Archdiocese of Chicago that received permission to continue the TLM, providing he referred to it as a TLM. It is to be called the Mass of the Missal of 1962. The church is St. James at Stag Bridge. They are still subject to Supich's arbitrary restrictions. However, no Latin Mass on the first of every month, etc. And I, I actually went to the bulletin, and it does appear that they have periodic Latin Masses, and uh, I think the priest is a diocesan. Actually, what's really interesting, uh, the priest had some had some good stuff to say in the bulletin, and uh, he, he actually, he, he shared Bishop Strickland's comments. So this is, this is really interesting, and uh, this, this is the resistance in Chicago, so good job, Bishop. I mean, he, he, he's sharing comments by Bishop Strickland, which uh, Bishop Strickland basically opposes supage on everything. I mean, there, there's it's two religions. Okay, moving on to the next comment, hold fast. He says, regarding Protestants participating in the Synod, the Vatican considers New Age types to be Protestants. That's the type of Protestant they have in mind for the New Age Catholic Church and Synod, not the conservative Bible-believing anti-abortion, anti-blessing of LMNOP acts, that's for sure. And that's true. Uh, whenever they say Protestants, it's really New Age. Uh, new Age, what do you call it, pantheists, uh, people who worship the earth. So that's those are good clarifications. I do appreciate the comments. Uh, so we're going to start. Traditional, comment, or traditional confirmations have been canceled in England and Wales. The Latin Mass Society of England regrets to report that Cardinal Vincent Nichols made the decision communicated to the Society by letter that the Sacrament of Confirmation is not to be celebrated according to the 1962 liturgical books in the Archdiocese of Westminster, the annual celebration which has for nearly 20 years been organized by the Latin Mass Society at St. James Spanish Place, at which candidates were confirmed by an auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese on occasion by Cardinal Raymond Burke, will accordingly not take place this year until the decision is reversed. I mean, we can wait a year or two for confirmations. <laughs> I think if we wait a year, then, you know, all these um, rotten bishops and priests will be gone. But I, I wouldn't make a I, I wouldn't make it like a point to wait. I, I'd try to, you know, get traditional confirmation. You can probably try to get that through your local SSPX. But um, that's just me. I'm, I'm not the one looking for confirmation. Uh, let's go to the distorter. So Michael Sean Winters wrote this article. I believe he's the editor of the National Catholic Distorter, and they're, it's, they're absolutely sold out on modernism. Uh, the article is called More Catholics Behaving Badly Making Jesus Weep. He criticizes Raymond Arroyo, Archbishop Cordelione, Vermont Father Peter Williams, who we'll get to in a minute, Bishop Strickland, and Chicago Father Anthony Boss, who resisted Supich's ban on Ad Orienum. He didn't even resist, he just questioned it, and now he's in priest prison. Uh, but if you're in, anyone who's criticizing that group of people clearly opposes the Catholic faith. That's just how it is. The distorter, it, it's good for entertainment from time to time, kind of like parody almost, but except these people actually believe their heresy. And, you know, I use the word heresy a lot. I've been using it a lot more. And I can't declare people formally heretics, but when you reject doctrines of the faith, what does that make you? Are you in good standing in the Catholic Church, do you think? I mean, maybe under Pope Francis, but really, though, in the Catholic Church, in the, in the actual Catholic Church, are you in good standing if you oppose doctrines of the Catholic faith? I mean, you, you, I mean, you can oppose one doctrine, you can oppose many. Most of these people do oppose many doctrines of the Catholic faith. And uh, what does that make them? What do you call them? Modernists? I think heretic is a good word for that. Uh, 
Bishop David Bonner of the Diocese of Youngstown, Ohio, issued a letter Wednesday. And so I'm going to read it, just a few clips here. It says, sadly, I've been, it has been brought to my attention that some of our preachers have been using the pulpit and the homily time to speak about the jab, political at the expense of God's will. Such behavior is an abuse of preaching and goes against the grain of current church teaching. I want to remind you that the Holy Father, the CCB, and the Ohio bishops have endorsed the jabs for the common good. Recently, our Holy Father noted that the jab is a moral obligation for Catholics. What do you think about that? It's not. But he goes on to say that, uh, that he's not requiring priests to get the jab. Good. That's fine. I mean, that's, that's what you should do. Okay, the Supreme Court ruled against it. Uh, he says, I want to state unequivocally that I will no longer condone abuses in this area if I am made aware of any, that any clergy is using the pulpit to promote political opinions and denouncing current church teaching. I will have no other recourse than to revoke their faculty to preach. We all have opinions, however, as a priest and leader of the community at prayer, our message has to be that Jesus has to be that of Jesus Christ and the gospel. Denouncing current church teaching. Current church teaching is the jab is a moral obligation. I don't know what church you belong to, Bishop, but certainly not the one I belong to. German Catholic bishops on Monday, last Monday, welcomed an initiative that is calling for a change in church teaching on sexuality and gender identity. So what a surprise. The initiative titled Out in Church for a Church Without Fear launched on January 24th. The seven-point list of demands the organize in a seven-point list seven-point list of demands the organizers wrote. Defamatory and outdated statements of church doctrine on sexuality and gender need to be revised on the basis of theological and human scientific findings. This is of utmost relevance, especially in, in the view of worldwide church responsibility for the human rights of LMNOP persons. The initiative, backed publicly by 125 people, including priests, religion teachers, and church employees, also appealed for blessings and access to the sacraments for LMNOP couples. The campaign was welcomed on behalf of the Bishop's Conference by Bishop Helmut Dicer of Aachen, Western Germany. And so this bishop is a modernist heretic. What can I say? Um, I'm going with St. Paul over this bishop. And this initiative backed publicly by 125 people, including priests, religion teachers, and church employees. Um, 125 people are opposing the Catholic faith. At least that many. But they're all in opposition to the Catholic faith, and they should all be excommunicated. If their bishop were Catholic, which he's not, he has reject, he's publicly rejected the Catholic faith. These 125 people have publicly rejected the Catholic faith, and they are, and I can't, like I said, I can't declare them heretics by the church, but what does that make them? Um... How many of these are priests? They should be laicized, or at least um, dismissed from the, dismissed from the priesthood, dismissed from suspended. I guess suspended would be a better word. Dismissed as laicization. We're moving on to Bishop Paprocki. So. Let's see what I have on Twitter. So Father John Stone posted a declaration by Bishop Paprocki. Um, okay. He said that Sacred Heart Church in Springfield is designated as a non-parochial church for the Eucharistic celebrations, according to the Missal of 1962. However, Sacred Heart Church, they have the canons regular of St. John Cantus. He said that the priests of the canons regular of the Society of St. John Cantus, incarnated in the Archdiocese of Chicago, are entrusted with these celebrations and with the pastoral care of the faithful. Uh, in accord with the following provisions, one, all masses celebrated by the canons will, in Springfield, 
in the diocese will be celebrated on the first Sunday of the month according to the Novus Ordo. A plan of two, a plan of catechesis will be presented to assist and accompany those attached to the former rite to fully appreciate the restoration of the liturgy and the teachings of the council. And three, <laughs> as requested by the Archbishop of the priests incarnated in the Archdiocese of Chicago serving in the Diocese of Springfield, Illinois, will be asked to affirm in their written petition to celebrate the sacraments in the early, early liturgical form that the restored liturgy of the council is the unique expression of a lex orandi of the Roman rite. So what this means is Paprocki caved. He caved the sewage and his ridiculous demands. And there was, a, there was an introductory letter here. Um, so it looks like, you know, they are incarnated for sure. There's, there's no question to disagree. They are incarnated in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and they're in the Diocese of Springfield, Illinois. Um, so Paprocki, uh, all the, the canons are serving in Springfield, they remain in Chicago diocesan priest, and Sewage has canonical authority over them. Paprocki explained that he acts on the request of Cardinal Sewage, who imposes in the diocese. Theoretically, Paprocki has no options. Theoretically. So did Sewage bully Paprocki into issuing a statement? Because Paprocki really could have just ignored it. I mean, that's what a good bishop would do, right? But as we can see here, unless the canons requested it too, I mean, whose decision was it to publish that decree? Was it Paprocki? Was it the canons? Or was it Supich who bullied him into doing so? I don't know. But what we can see is Paprocki's not going to stand up for the traditional Catholic faith. He was one of the, he's one of the good bishops. Um, he's one of the ones who people mentioned whenever they said, okay, if the Pope ends uh, all right ordinations, who's, which bishop is going to ordain priests in the old right? And Paprocki's name came up. Well, you can cross that off the list. Are there any bishops in the United States who would do so? I don't know. I, I mentioned Gracida. He's, a, he's almost 100. He just celebrated, he just celebrated uh, some anniversary of the priest. I'm not sure... How many years as a priest? I don't know. Or maybe it's his 50th year as a bishop. I don't know. I should really probably re uh, look into these things before I say them on, on live stream. But uh, congratulations, to, <laughs> congratulations to Bishop Gracida for some kind, of, um, some kind of anniversary for him. Bishop Barron <laughs> had some comments about Martin Luther. There was a video kind of making its rounds around Twitter. Bishop Barron questioned whether Martin Luther falls on the mystical or the prophetic side of things. Uh, I would say Martin Luther falls on the heretical side of things, Bishop Barron. What do you say? Do you agree with Pope Francis? Uh, or are you going to put up a statue of Martin Luther? Okay. <laughs> There's an article about how seminaries are having difficulty weeding women out of seminaries, and it's the women who think they're men or pretend to be men, and it's it's very difficult. And I mean, I guess if you're not really concerned with we weeding out people with feminine tendencies, then you wouldn't necessarily be interested in weeding out actual women in seminaries. Along this line, Pope Francis had some. Uh, comments recently. I'm going to read the just the full quote. He said, and and I am thinking too of parents who are facing their children's problems, children with many illnesses, children who are sick, even with permanent illnesses. How much pain is there? Parents who can see different sexual orientations in their children, how to deal with this and accompany their children and not hide in an attitude of condemnation. So if you're child identifies as parents who see different sexual orientations in their children? What? And Pope Francis is promoting this? No wonder we had this McCarrick scandal. No wonder we still have the problems in the church that we have. Unbelievable. 
The Archdiocese of Miami announced Tuesday that one of its priests fathered a child from a former relationship, but that he would remain in service of his parishioners. According to Archdiocesan spokeswoman Mary Ross Augusta, uh, Monsignor uh, Chanel Ginti, pastor of St. James Catholic Church since 2015, learned in December that he fathered a child from a relationship with a woman that ended over a year ago. I believe this guy was the vicar general of Miami. The information did not come from the mother of the child, but from another source. Monsignor Ginti appropriately reached out to the mother and plans to contribute to the support of his child, Augusta's release said. Okay, great, you're complying with the law. Good job. But uh, this would be a massive scandal. This would have been a massive scandal even just a few years ago. But we're so desensitized to this kind of stuff that they would allow him to remain in ministry. And I think they removed him from the position of vicar general, but he's still a priest in the diocese. He's still the pastor of St. James Catholic Church. Wow. Wow. Okay. Rhode Island drops charges against Father Jackson. The FSSP, but federal charges remain. We'll see how that moves along. <laughs> Depends on which side you're on. Are you on the side of church militant or restoring the faith media? <laughs> you know what I think. All right, we're getting to the synod. Did you did you uh, participate in your diocesan synod, or did you sign up to attend? Or are you planning on attending and talking about the Latin Mass, or? Uh, if your bishop's a particularly corrupt one, who supports the LMNOP agenda, you could just ask him point blank, do you think sodomy is a mortal sin? And see what his answer is. Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerec, I believe he's a Jesuit, was asked whether he can message uh, the introduction of women deacons into the church, and he is one of the key synodality cardinals. He said, I would have nothing against it, but reforms need a stable foundation. Okay, so first off, I want to say any priest who says they're okay with women deacons is a heretic. Anyone who says that this women deacons is a heresy. Uh, he says, but reforms need a stable foundation. If the Pope were now simply to allow very pro body, which is the priestly ordination of married men, and deaconesses, the danger of schism would be great. So he's talking about reforms and how we need to, the, the, the gradual steps, which is what Pope Francis has been doing, the gradual steps, you push, push the boundaries as far as you can and push them even further. And people will just become, like I said, desensitized to this kind of stuff. And so they... Just think of the people that still make excuses for Pope Francis. Oh, well, you know, he's got people around him telling him the wrong information. Oh, he's just misinterpreted. How long does that go on? Maybe forever. Okay, so he says, after, uh, Cardinal Hollerich says, After all, it's not just about the German situation, where perhaps only a small part would break away. In Africa or in countries like France, many bishops would possibly not go along with it. So, it's not about preserving the Catholic faith, it's about changing the Catholic faith. Basically, what he's saying is that, we, you know, he, he certainly supports women deacons, but uh, there would be great resistance in good places, amongst good bishops and good priests. And in places like Germany, where the hierarchy is completely overrun by modernist heretics, LMNOP bishops, it's, it would probably work. They've probably already introduced some sort of crazy women in Germany anyway. The Pope has nothing against conservatives if they learn from life. In the same way, he has nothing against the reformers if they keep the whole church in mind. And the Pope does not like infighting in the church. 
Really? I don't think he I think I I think I really disagree with that statement. Because who tried to cancel the Latin Mass? He said, uh, sometimes I have the impression that the German bishops do not understand the Pope. The Pope is not a liberal, he is radical. And the radicality of the gospel causes a change. You know who is also radical? Lucifer. Okay. Uh, the Cardinal, we're going to the Chaldean Rite. This is an Eastern Rite. It's not the Byzantine Rite. It's a different Eastern Rite. So the use of modern Arabic instead of Syriac in the liturgies of the Chaldean Church is not a tradition in response to a missionary vocation of announcing the gospel to men and women of the present time, Chaldean patriarch Louis Raphael Sacco said. For years, the Chaldean liturgy has been undergoing a controversial updating, which led to the publication of an Arabic missal. Sacco falsely claims the need to constant adaptation of the liturgy to the needs of the time that has always marked the path of the Catholic Church and has allegedly been authoritatively reproposed by the teachings of the Vatican to church. So this this Chaldean patriarch is trying to destroy his Eastern Rite. So it's kind of sad for that. Pope Francis had a, um, there's a statement on the Vatican website. He made a statement about how he wants jab fact checkers. And his fact checkers are actually, the, the ones that actually um, are his fact checkers, are funded by source. So that's good. Not really. But it's, it's kind of unbelievable. You know, Pope Francis makes a deal with communist China. He's being... His initiatives are being funded by communists. Oh, I'm breaking up. Sorry about that. Um, I can get that straightened out. Leave a comment if I'm still breaking up. Father Peter Williams of the Diocese of Burlington, Vermont. Now, this is pretty good. Father Peter Williams said, I think recently... Especially the parish priests, they're like caged dogs, and the bishop comes and beats them with a stick every once in a while uh, to get them to comply with whatever he wants them to do, and then the people do the same. Peter Williams is the one who was unjabbed, and his bishop required jabs, even, uh, even though the Supreme Court didn't. Father Williams said, not my bishop, nor uh, or not my pope, are going to stand with me on Judgment Day. And it's just me before Jesus. There will be no excuse when he says to me, you knew better. Okay, moving on. Father Juicy, uh, Juice Joseph Tran Nagok Than uh, of the Order of Preachers Dominicans was killed in a knife attack on Saturday in Vietnam. Father Tran was attacked January 29th in the mission of Dacamont, about 40 miles northeast of Kontum. He was hearing confessions before the last Mass of the evening, and it's an extremely sad situation. I saw that the person who killed him was presumably uh, mentally ill. However, we could, tr we could look and see what Jesse Romero says about mental illness. He says that some of these people in the mental institutions are actually possessed. So we have no idea, but that's very sad. Okay. <laughs> With restoring the faith channel, there you go. All right. And there's an eerie bishop who banned a reverent Novus Ordo. And I like to highlight these because they don't care about your reverence. They don't care about your reverent liturgy, whether it's a Latin Mass or the, or the um, reverent Novus Ordo, the Ad Orientum Novus Ordo. Now, Bishop Lawrence Persico of Erie, Pennsylvania, I believe he was a Biden bishop. He supported the uh, he supported the initiative 
whenever the, the bishops were talking about denying Biden communion, he supported the initiative to just forget about it. So he says that ad orientum is banned. However, uh, in parishes on other days throughout the week, no more than two masses with the congregation may be celebrated ad orientum, provided that the pastor has first consulted the parish council members on the matter as prayerfully as their input. And uh, it's probably catechized those who take part. So he wants permission. He wants the priest to get permission from the parish council. In what universe is this? This is this is ridiculous. Absolutely pathetic. And to me, it's kind of irrelevant. I don't attend the Novus Ordo, but. You know, it's, it's really sad. These priests are trying to just have reverent liturgy. And guess what? It doesn't work. These bishops are trying to ban it. All right. Well, that's been it for... E that, that will be it for EBTN News. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. We are the laity, and we will not be silent.